South Florida. This is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Hi there and welcome to Headliners. I'm Lauren Pastrana. A nightclub shooting that claimed the life of a security guard is now sparking change in the city of Doral. The mayor there says it's time to change the ordinance for liquor sales in the city. Some residents agree. Seven other people were hurt in the shooting at Martini Bar at City Place Doral and the suspect was also killed. CBS News Miami has also learned the liquor license of that bar now seems to be in question. CBS News Miami's Yvonne Taylor has more. Right now, Martini Bar is under the lens of City of Doral. The municipality is saying that apparently the establishment may not be authorized to be selling liquor to patrons after 2 a.m. Mayor Christy Fraga is proposing changing the current ordinance. We are going to be changing the rollback or the time of operations from 3.59 a.m. till 2 a.m. and last call at 1.30 a.m. For anyone who falls under nightclub, bar or entertainment establishment, restaurants will still be at 1 a.m. This was the result of a meeting at City Hall where residents asked for immediate changes in Doral after the deadly shooting over the weekend. So money is not the, the, the issue here. You know, if bettering this would be changing the times, great. Nothing good ever happens at 3 in the morning. This is a fr family friendly city. I was born here. It's a mostly residential place. Doral Police Chief also testified. Mayor Fraga asked him specific questions about Martini Bar. Do you know if the location was doing um, frisks or security checks upon entrance? So I know that the, the business conducts those um, occasionally. I do not know if that evening a search was conducted on patrons. 23 year old George Castellanos was working a security inside the bar when a fight broke out. He tried to stop it, but he was shot and killed by a gunman. CBS News Miami's interviewed his parents. This is what they told us about searches at the entrance of the bar. That day, yeah. they had changed the person that does the padding to somebody else. Yeah, that usually knew. he's new, that he's doesn't new. really do it. Councilwoman Maureen Porras shared with CBS News Miami what the city is looking into about martini bars liquor license. There is no clear indication at this time from what I have been reviewing that Martini Bar may have had permission to be serving alcohol for consumption past the 2 a.m. curfew that applies currently under the latest ordinance that was passed in 2022. And let's remember that according to Doral Police that shooting happened at 3 30 a.m. So the changes that Mayor Christy Fraga is proposing the first reading will happen on April 24th and the second one on May 8th. Of course, we will be here to keep you updated with the latest. We are in Doral. I'm Ivan Taylor, CBS News, Miami. On the heels of that violent, deadly shooting at City Place Doral, local police departments are adding new gear aimed at protecting officers out in the field. CBS News Miami's Keith Jones reports from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters in Doral with the latest. Once you open this up, you know, the body armor goes inside. This rapid deployment force member of the Miami-Dade Police Department looks like he's ready to do battle. In essence, that's what this is about. Former Miami-Dade Commissioner Sally Heyman took it upon herself to secure this high-tech body armor. The technology comes from Israel. She was able to come home with 102 sets of these bags, each containing head-to-toe body armor. 80 units will go to Miami-Dade Police. 20 will be distributed to North Miami, the city of Miami, the Gables, and to Korea. Directions. The focus of her career is what compelled her to outfit our men and women behind the badge. If you ask anybody what's the most important thing for them, it's their public safety uh, when it comes to dealing with government. And this is just one more way to do it. I don't think anything is more important for us public servants up here than to take action when it's available or pursue what could be available and bring it home to our streets. I'm glad we're the first. Heyman was able to negotiate a deal paying roughly $67,000 for 102 units. That's the money that came right out of the county budget as well. And the deputy director of the Miami-Dade Police Department says they were able to put in requests for customization. That was a, an actual customized request for the purpose of this uh, gear, in addition to the innovative uh, technical abilities with the force uh, dispersion. It was the fact that our extra safety and protection from ballistics was included with this design. And, and that is really the key takeaway uh, for uh, officer safety. It's new technology offering South Florida officers a little more confidence out there in the field. Believe it or not, there's actually training that goes along with this new body armor. A representative from the manufacturer will be here on the 18th.
getting them all up to speed on how to use and wear this new body armor. At Miami Day Police Headquarters, Keith Jones, CBS News, Miami. Turning now to the crisis in Haiti, the State Department says that will no longer sponsor relief flights out of the country. But one of those flights, possibly the last one, landed at Miami International Airport last week. CBS News Miami's Tanya Francois knows one of the passengers very well. Mr. Francois. <laughs> After months of waiting, weeks of convincing, and the State Department stopping their flights, my father decided to no longer risk remaining in Haiti. He boarded a helicopter from the embassy before getting on a plane to come back to his other home here in South Florida. I left my house at 5 o'clock in the morning, 47 a.m. at the embassy, and then I'm here now. It's been a long time. The violence in Haiti continues, and leaving the island nation that is still being overrun by gangs has become more difficult for Americans. Democrats in Congress say they've had 75 briefings trying to convince their Republican counterparts to sign off on funding that would pay for a multi-nation military intervention. They say Republicans want to see Haiti stabilized first. For Americans like my father, the constant instability made the decision to leave easier. Who finally made you decide to come back? Some lady named Tanya. <laughs> I wanted to get out of the country so we had safer, to find a, a safer house. Lois Pierre was also on this State Department flight. At 16, she says she's ready to start school and leave what's happening in Haiti behind her. I managed to get out with my mom, and we wanted to go as, as quick as possible because we don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know when the country is going to close. So we took the opportunity to leave, like, as soon as possible. How long are you here for, Dad? God knows. I don't know. I'm trying to go back as soon as possible. What is it about Haiti that's so alluring? It's paradise. Paradise on Earth. <laughs> Tanya Francois, CBS News, Miami. Ah, so glad they're reunited. When we come back, from alligators to iguanas, see the surge in critters invading South Florida and causing quite a scare for some residents. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. From gators and backyards to iguanas all over South Florida, CBS News Miami's Peter Dench has had his hands full the last week. First, we go to Southwest Miami Dade, where a nearly 500 pound alligator was found roaming around one man's yard. Tim Wynn says this is a stunning sight that he captured on his cell phone a 480 pound alligator in the backyard of his farm. Nervous. Yeah, so nervous. Were you scared? Yeah, I'm scared about it. And what did you do? Call 911? Yeah, I, I, I called 911 uh, right away. Along with Miami Dade police, veteran trapper Todd Hardwick of Pesky Critters responded to this farm at Southwest 227th Avenue and 233rd Street. This is typical for this time of year. We've got a large male gator, a little bit over 11 feet. He got out of the canal last night. Wynn captured this image on his cell phone as it takes a team to place the alligator into Hardwick's pickup truck. One, two, three, go. One of 1.3 million alligators in Florida. This is the time of year that they're all out moving around. Their metabolism is increasing with the warmer weather, the longer days of daylight, and more importantly, it is the beginning of the breeding season. So these male gators are looking for female gators. They're also fighting with other male gators to get them out of their territory. If you see an alligator, give it some space. You know, alligators normally are afraid of people and they will stay away from us. That changes when they get out of water and they walk because once they know they're out of water, they're out of their element and they are more dangerous because they're vulnerable. They know they're, they're, they've got a problem. They're not in the water. They can't get away. This is time of year we tell everybody, be aware of your surroundings. Any body of water can and will contain an alligator in Florida at some time. And Florida's iguana invasion is heating up. The big lizards can be found everywhere from a supermarket parking lot to the canals in your backyard. State officials say the population has grown out of control and they're stepping up efforts to get rid of them. Peter Dench joins us once again, this time from Miami Gardens with one iguana removal specialist story. 
Michael Ronquillo moves quietly as he uses a long catch pole with a wire loop at the end of it to capture this iguana. So this is a typical green iguana. Um, you know, this is where you find them in homes. We don't suggest you approach them because they have very sharp nails, as you can see. You know, they have sharp teeth as well that they use to bite their the leaves, you know. And when you handle them, you know, they can carry salmonella, especially their feces. So if you do have to touch them, you should wash your hands immediately to avoid any illnesses. Ron Quello's Humane Iguana Control has been hired by homeowners, homeowners associations, and businesses to capture invasive green Mexican and black springtail iguanas. Um, you know, it's important to catch them so they don't keep reproducing. You know, the more they reproduce, the, the further they're going to um, negatively impact our ecosystem and our native species. We have seen iguanas eating gardens, getting into pools, even finding their way into toilets. They have a reputation for passing salmonella to pets and burrowing near lakes and canals, causing erosion. What the iguanas do is they eat a lot of uh, native plants that our native animals eat. Um, and if, let's say for the burrowing owl, these iguanas will go into the burrowing owl's hole and destroy their eggs and eat their eggs just to leave their eggs. The invasive iguanas are not protected and are euthanized after being captured. The organization PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, has worked closely with the state to make sure it is handled humanely. Our, our concern is that, you know, it's not done with, that it is done in the most humane manner possible and people aren't using baseball bats and things like that. The green, Mexican, and springtail iguanas are not native to South Florida. They are from Central and South America. They wouldn't be there if it weren't for the pet industry that has been importing them into the, into the state and breeding them for decades. Ron Quillo feels his work is helping both homeowners and the ecosystem. He says it's been very busy lately with efforts to remove the invasive iguanas being stepped up. In Miami Gardens, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami. When we come back, a special trip for the Coral Reef Senior High School Chorus. We'll hear about their upcoming visit to L.A. and why being in the chorus goes beyond music. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News, Miami. Welcome back, I'm Lauren Pastrana. Coral Reef Senior High School's Chorus program is traveling to the West Coast for a choir clinic. This program and the teacher have changed and shaped the lives of many of the students and it shows with their recent accomplishments. CBS News Miami's Trish Christakis went to the school to sit in on their practice to give us a sneak peek before their Los Angeles trip. These students will soon be one of music's meccas, Los Angeles. I think 80% of the uh, students and parents that are actually attending the field trip uh, have never gone to California. So, I mean, I'm just so excited. I can't, I can't wait. While in L.A., these students will be visiting major landmarks like the Grammy Museum, Warner Bros. Studio, and most importantly, performing at two L.A. area senior citizen facilities. This song they're practicing will be one of them. Choir program has consistently excelled on the district and state level since 1997. They have been crowned first place 19 out of 25 times at the Coral Gables Merrick Choral Competition, not to mention major performances at some of the most prestigious conferences. National ACDA, what we did last year was it was just like a career moment. It's a career moment for me, and it's also what most choir programs aspire to. Sure, this program has their long list of accolades, but that's not the reason these students come to class. It's been my second family when I'm going through the lows that life throws. The strong like family feeling has really gotten me through my high school years, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's an escape, and for some, it's been the realization of a dream. Honestly, I, you know, it sounds childish, but to be a rock star, Honestly, just to be someone that can, you know, show my work, show my art to who knows how many people in the future. High school can be a challenging time for young teens, and their teacher, Mr. Davis, has made it a safe place for these students to express themselves. My choir director in high school was probably the most influential uh, teacher in my life. Payback, what was, um, you know, invested in me, I wanted to do the same thing to my students. For the universal language we all speak, music has helped many of us, and these students are excited to share this gift with Los Angeles and the world. But, like one of the most intriguing ways, more embracing ways to just find yourself. 
in Miami. Trish Kristakis, CBS News, Miami. She is one of the most popular employees at Memorial Health System. She doesn't treat patients per se, but she does help them heal. Her name is Mesa and she's a therapy dog. CBS News Miami photojournalist Adam Spunt brings us her story. High five. There we go. High five. Leslie's a registered nurse and Mesa's a therapy dog. Together they share a professional bond. They find themselves at the halfway mark of their marathon-like 60-hour work week. Okay. It's not your typical type of therapy, but patients can't get enough of it. Mesa pays a visit to a patient named Stephanie who experienced a stroke while working in Jamaica. Stroke victims with weak arms brush her. She also motivates those to walk again and rewalk their own dogs. Come, you wanna do one more my lap? Yes. My lap, my lap. Lisa. Come, up, come. Go. Lisa, I'm taking a hug. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you have a dog. It's okay, they like each other. <laughs> it's not a traditional type of therapy, but one the patients love. She lifts my spirits, because it's hard, not being able to do much. It would be very different without her. Every place you go, should have one. Having Mesa do this, I know that Mesa and I both make a difference in our patients' lives every day. Yes, you do. While I'll treat for the patients, it's not so bad for Mesa either. Mesa is not alone. She is one of six dogs in the Memorial Health System. While uplifting the spirits of patients, Leslie and Mesa also bring smiles to the hospital staff. And Leslie says everyone has a similar reaction. It's Mesa! <laughs> there, everybody loves her. They're so happy. Look, look. When Mesa comes into my office, uh, my day just like gets so much brighter. Um, she just irradiates all this love. After five years of working side by side, Leslie and Mesa share not just their workplace, but also their living space. When they head home, Mesa even claims the front seat. Sit. Mesa's been at, out of the house for at least 12 hours during the day, so we're both pretty tired when we get home. Mesa's work doesn't end when she gets home. My husband passed away unexpectedly nine months ago, and Mesa has been by my side the entire time. She was with me in the hospital with him, and she's gotten me through a lot, and I really don't know how I would have done it without her. After enjoying a few more treats, Mesa and Leslie settle in to relax, gearing up for another fulfilling day at work. That was Adam Spunt reporting, and Mesa, what a good girl. Thanks for joining us this half hour on Headliners. As always, keep it right here to CBS News Miami for up-to-the-minute breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Make it a great one.